All right. Well, this is the last, uh, this is the 30th of April. It's the last insider briefing of the month. And next week's, uh, the 7th, will be a big production. And actually, I'm very excited because it's the first Thursday and we kind of do it properly. I'll, I'm going to have a smart board. And with us, uh, I expect to have the amazing Dan Early. Now, Dan Early, as you all know, is the senior engineer of the company. He also brought to us the modular water systems technology, the five unique licenses for prepackaged water system in a box type technologies. And we know that this is what works for those remote decentralized systems. In fact, during this call, I'll be reviewing that research that I brought before about decentralization and how that works. Okay, and the reason why I'm bringing Dan Early on the show is that he's becoming involved with Investor Water. You know, the Investor Water vision is very, very clear. It's a tripod, okay? The most important one at the center of it is technology, right? Without technology, you can't get this stuff done. So that is a key item. With the technology of modular water systems, we're able to have these elegant, inexpensive, roll in, roll out kind of water systems, which are perfect for these small decentralized uses. And if you think that decentralization is a small business, you got another thing coming. So I'm going to have that article coming up shortly and we'll review the research on this. But essentially, Investor Water relies on a relatively inexpensive water solution that can be rented, short-term rented, right? STR, that's that old Airbnb term, STR. And so the idea is that you can rent these things out and if they're not portable, then it's not a rental, right? Because once it's in the ground, how do you get it out? So we need that technology and he's really the technologist. He's also an amazing visionary and he understands the corporate um, situation very, very well because investor water is turning into a big deal. And I'm going to start by reviewing, in fact, the whole decentralized water loop, shall we say. In fact, it's called closing the loop. So there we go. All right. So this is a piece of research that occurred. It was issued. It was a webinar on June 28th, 2016. If you want to watch this whole webinar, it's quite fascinating because um, Abhirab makes some additional commentary that are not in these slides. Uh, just uh, email invest at originclear.com and Devin will get you the link and you'll be able to play it. And you can't otherwise play it. You have to like contact Lux and so forth. All right. So then what's this all about? Well, aside from Lux Research being an amazing organization, what they said in 2016, and it's even more so today, is aging infrastructure is breaking the bank. All right. What does that mean? Very simple. And I've been showing this, this slide. It's a very, very important slide. 1960, at the bottom of this graph here, we have about a $14 billion expenditure on operation and maintenance, right? Just keeping this stuff going. In real dollars, this is expanded to $72 billion, far more than 72 billion in like today money, it's more like two or 300 billion. But in terms of uh, $1960, it's $72 billion. And that's in repair, replacing old pipes and mains, drinking water, funding needs, 60% are related to pipe infrastructure. So this is a big deal. And we've been hearing a lot about how we're gonna spend money on infrastructure. The president has spoken about COVID phase four being all about the infrastructure, this um, very large infrastructure program, these multi-trillion dollar. But historically, Congress has failed to do these. During the 2008 crash, there was this big shovel-ready infrastructure bill and frankly, nothing much happened. It was pretty sad. So we can't expect the government to do anything about it. So business as usual. In addition, if you want to solve problems by building a lot of centralized billion dollar projects, well, where are you going to locate them? People live in these places where they are wildernesses, NIMBY, not in my business, not in my backyard, all that stuff. So it's very hard to even locate these things, let alone pay for them. Non-revenue water, big problem. It goes as high as 30%, meaning this, this is water that you've lost. Think about it. California has, is very, it, water is very precious and then it lose, loses water. Now, fortunately, we're not the worst. I see San Diego is right there in the lower, lower 40%. And New York is rather on the high side, which is too bad because they have a fantastic water system, but it's getting old. Chicago is way up there. London's the worst. Who's at the far right? Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv is an amazing water manager. 
90, almost 90% 90 of their water is recycled. So they are very, very diligent. Uh, I think a major reason we don't have a war in the Middle East is that Israel selling water to Jordan and Egypt, right? And if maybe probably also Lebanon. So Israel is a net exporter of water. Think about it. Anyway, so this is a big deal. Moving on here, again, billions required, a billion here, a billion there. Pretty soon you're talking about a lot of money, right? The problem's getting worse. Cost of repairs and upgrades are not coming from government handouts, of course. Investment gap will be 105 billion per year over the next decade, which means five, half a trillion dollars in 10 years. Need to expand capacity, extreme storms, climate pressure, more population. We hear the stories all the time. CSOs, which are combined sewer overflows. That's when literally sewage just gets overloaded and falls into the ocean. And beautiful places like San Francisco get, get damaged terribly. Look at Seattle, Washington with that wonderful, I mean, these, these are ocean fronts that are just amazing and they're being destroyed. Look at all these events, untreated CSO events. Now, decentralized treatment model it is coming to the rescue which means that we have the ability to get around the problem. Just the same way that PCs got around the problem of mainframes. Remember that there were long lines to use mainframe, mainframe utilization, mainframe access was a big deal back in the 60s and 70s. And you sat down your little teletypewriter, clunk, 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 with a little, you repaired a little tape and you put it in a reader, 30 bits per second. That's about one millionth the speed of, the, of what you're seeing here. So there was no access and PCs got around this problem. Now they are apparently less efficient. Why? Because not being used all the time, but they're available for you. They serve you. So they're efficient for the user. And that's who the productive person is, not the central machine. Decentralization serves the end user and that's true of water. Today's centralized water treatment facility has these various sewage lines and these triangles are the lift stations. These are the these are basically wells that push water up and in, in, into higher elevations. And then, of course, uh, that gives you an idea of all the things that are being served by in a 900,000 person city. You see these, these big, huge, you've seen these big water treatment plants, bottom right there. And sure enough, in America, you know, there's a huge amount of, of um, treatment by a very small number of facilities, which is dangerous because a handful of mega systems serving 210 million people can break. Now, decentralized treatment has come about. First, it started with septic tanks, and then it moved into a more formal method of operation. Here's a great diagram which shows you various treatment points, point of use treatment, as we call it, decentralized treatment, all flowing to a central wastewater treatment plant. And now this treatment plant doesn't have to be so huge because there's been all of this preliminary treatment happening. Reduced hydraulic loading, in other words, less water pipe needed and advanced treatment technologies enable localized reuse. If you're sitting here in a farm, for example, and you are treating the water, well, you can reuse the water. You're going to lower costs and you're going to be a better steward of the environment. If you send it downstream to the wastewater treatment plant, it's not going to come back upstream. The, the treated water typically does not go back up. The pipes just aren't there talks about some of the places it's worked and these success stories are multiplying. And the, the reason why it has not been implemented on wide scale at the time, and this is being solved, the first one is conventional wastewater treatment technologies haven't scaled down well. Guess what? Modular water systems is the answer to scaling down that problem. So this is very strategic. Lack of remote monitoring control, that's very important. That's the what we call the industrial internet of things, IIoT. And that's that's a key uh, factor that we have to think about. And it's being implemented. There's really not a problem with that. Uh, and the other things, regulations are being solved and so forth. So water quality, odor concerns, again, that's technology. So what's it going to take? It's going to take rolling it out, more remote water monitoring, and more reuse. So this is where this is all going. Gets into some of the breakdown. Small systems are getting much more efficient. And then it talks about some specific cases where it's been implemented, for example, in China and fewer staff. There's all these wonderful things. I'm not going to go on at too much more length, but gives you an idea of what we're talking about here, which is decentralization. Decentralization is great, 
But the problem is, is that we have a major virus problem today. And as I was saying in recent briefings, it's coming down to either the big central players are getting billions and trillions of money. We're talking about uh, municipals and large corporations. So they're stable. And in fact, currently we have a very, very large bid that's in process right now. Again, disclaimer, I can never guarantee these happen, but what it means is that this is a multi-million dollar project for which we are the sole bidder, all right? And it's because of our reputation and they want us to do handle it all. So it's a big project and it's actually in Las Vegas. I can't tell you more than that, but it's happening right now. These people have money. The issue is, of course, it's not a fast growing business. So we call it a base load. And, and uh, as you know, we moved our headquarters from California to Texas. I'm in California. So we really moved there for efficiency and I covered that last week. But the fact is, is that our division there, Progressive Water Treatment, has a long history of great projects, multi-million dollar projects. And so this particular company wanted, multinational company wanted only Progressive to handle it because they didn't want to sort of have a pointing finger thing. They want to have one vendor and there's no competitors. It's us, ours to lose. So what that means is that business is continuing. It's solid. We receivables are going fine. We're rolling. So that's, that's perfectly okay. Now, as I said, though, I'm accustomed to fast growth. The, the water industry grows three to 6% per year. That doesn't even keep up with population growth. We need to do more. 70% of the toxic industrial waste in, America, in the world is dumped. 30% is treated. Now, more is treated in America for sure, but overall, remember, it's the same ocean. So if Bangladesh is doing a poor job and uh, they just don't have the infrastructure, then it comes to our shores eventually. So that's an important factor, which is how do we catch up and make it a clean planet? We can't do the three to 6% growth. So that's just base load and it gives the company the ability to get things done, to get things built. We have a great operation, 20 some people in Texas, and they do a great job. Very stable, very competent people. Our president and chief operating officer, Tom Marchesello, is doing a fabulous job over there. So along with, of course, the rest of the company, but he's really focusing a lot on making the manufacturing as integrated as possible with a full implementation of an enterprise grade CRM, customer relationship management system. So that's going on right now. Now, how do we get the, the, the growth? That's where we got into the decentralization, which unfortunately, that's not gonna get a lot of capital in the days to come. So we're, we're gonna have a problem with capital with these small installations. And that's when back in January, I started working on this problem of how do we fund these? And out of that came Investor Water. So Investor Water, remember that tripod. Okay, first part is the technology. It's for decentralized systems. And we, got, we have the breakthrough technology. It satisfies the need of the, that Lux research uh, study. Secondly, we have the projects themselves. And they come right now from end users or you know, business people and so forth to us because we're the water company. Eventually, as we pull away and we create a marketplace, then we'll be talking to water companies. That's the marketplace. So those, those people are coming to us with problems. Can you solve it? And then typically we go, well, here's your bid and it takes months to get a deal. Well, here's the third piece is the investor. Because so we've come up with a way that the investor can do short-term rentals. That we, the investor purchases an item for $100,000, let's say. Call it $75,000. $75,000 and includes our fee to manage things. And we represented the investor. We're not trying to make money on it on the Texas side. Texas makes its own money, but we're not here to make a lot of money out of selling these machines. We're here to make a lot of money out of getting investors in at the lowest cost possible price, adding our fee. They pay for it. And now we rent them out month to month. All the, the uh, end user has to come up with is first, last security, just like renting a house, right? Month to month. They don't want it, send it back. They don't pay come and get it. Why? It's still our property. That is an amazingly popular concept and I've got investors lighting up about it. So as we move forward, we're going to have more and more investors coming into this because guess what? 
It's a 0% yield marketplace. Now, right now, Devin is answering questions about the Regulation A offering that we got going and the offering.originclear.com. And so you go to that and you see that there is a unaccredited investment. It's very important that you see the circular, which is www.oc.gold slash offering. For, that's the SEC. That's all the details, how we're going to use the money, all that stuff. Anyway, so that is a, a great way to fund our operations and to get these investments going, et cetera. I'm going to get to the, the SBA part, really exciting in a second. So without further ado, speaking about the Regulation A offering, I can't, I got to tell you guys, the entire investor facing staff has now invested in this offering. Myself, Ken, Michael, and Devin, very proud of you guys. And um, it's also been very helpful for us to learn what it's like to be an investor and how, how the company treats investors, right? It's always good to have that other point of view. So we do drink the Kool-Aid for sure. All right. So what I've done is I've now covered the uh, investor water project. Why did we go to it? Because frankly, there was a new economy. And in, over this period, we've, we've become the water company for the new economy by providing a breakthrough in financing of these programs. Now, let's say that you go ahead and you rent this. Well, it's, the rental fee is going to be high, right? But that's okay because it solves your problem instantly. It's a relatively inexpensive solution. And you get the opportunity to do a lease or buyout anytime you like. So quickly, quickly rolls it out. You got your solution. Maybe you can't sell the property without putting in this property like our friends with the trailer park. Maybe you can't uh, meet environmental regulations, et cetera. And that is going to bring me to a very, very cool topic. As you know, we've been working in the pool space, but here's another more, even more interesting um, space. So I'm going to share this. I think you'll enjoy it as a quick video, and then I'll discuss where it goes from here, okay? <music> Estimados amigos y colegas, es un gran honor para mí hablar con ustedes en este día tan memorable. Hace tres años ustedes nos hicieron una promesa que integrarían nuestra tecnología en su sistema completo para el tratamiento del estercol. About three years ago, Deputy Pork went to research the treatment of hog manure. They came upon our technology, reached out, and we negotiated with them a license. Now, three years later, they've built a working commercial system. It's proven and it's working amazingly well. Origin Clear Technologies, ese apoyo que nosotros hemos necesitado al final de nuestro largo trabajo de 20 años, la participación de Origin Clear. Muy importante para el éxito que estamos teniendo con la puesta en marcha de nuestra planta piloto, la tecnología Origin Clear que ha simplificado, dentro de que es una parte compleja del otro sistema, eh, nuestra reacción ha sido, wow, esto es increíble. El, el estiércol consigamos separarlo en una fase sólida que podemos llevar a compostaje y consigamos agua clara eh, para poder regar la asociación con el INCLEAR ha sido como marcar el último gol en un partido de fútbol. Yo creo que juntos realizaremos cambios significantes en la industria de la cría de ganado. Podemos cambiar un problema real a una solución que elimina el desperdicio y también la contaminación de las lagunas de estiércol de larga duración. Muchísimas gracias otra vez a ustedes y que tengamos mucho éxito juntos en el futuro. Well, so why am I showing you this? Um, because it was a big win in October when I went to uh, Aragon and Huesca, the provinces in the north of Spain, and they have been growing fast because, you know, the coronavirus is not the only virus coming out of China. They've had a big problem with the swine uh, flu epidemic that has killed half of their pigs. And so Spain has been ramping up in order to supply China, 
which is a huge, huge market. The Chinese love pork, and so it's a big deal. And so literally, I, went, I was there, and they were each farm was exactly one kilometer from the next. By law, they couldn't be closer than one kilometer. So farm, 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 farm. Now, these are not real farms. These are factories, right? They're pig factories. So there's just not enough land to put all the manure on. So they had to have something. And Spain is currently in violation of the ammonia pollution laws of Europe, right? So that's obviously a problem. And, you know, we have to clearly do something about it. So we have a solution and we came up with this way of, with our partner of injecting our technology into existing processes and coming up with an end-to-end -end commercial system that was proven. Problem. Lots of money, right? Half a million, million dollars. And there you get into the old capital you know, process, raising the money, going to the European Union for grants, et cetera, takes time. And time that we don't have to deal with these problems. So what do we do about it? And that's where we came up with this incredible solution, short-term solution that came out of this whole trailer park problem, where a trailer park has these poop lagoons and it's relatively small, but it's still, it's hot. And so we're solving that problem in Alabama right now. I've been telling you that story. Well, much, much bigger is solving the problem with the animal manure lagoons. In fact, I'm going to show you a couple of things about that. It's going to blow your mind. Having to do with, there are 9 million cows in America. So what does that mean in terms of 9 million cows? A dairy farm with 2,500 cows produces as much waste as Miami. What's up with that? Okay, so I did the computation. There's about 440,000 people in central Miami. And what that means is that 9 million dairy cows alone is 3,600 Miamis. 1.5 billion people worth of poop just from dairy cows. Never mind the, the beef for slaughter, the pigs, the hogs, the poultry. Oh my God. We worry about municipal effluent. That's nothing. Literally, it's a planet worth. It's a planet worth of effluent coming from these animals. So it's a big deal. I'm very happy to report that this new project of Investor Water, which, as you recall, we have the pool one, which I'll talk about in a second. We have the trailer park one. And now we have this new one. We have a partner in Wisconsin who has secured financing to go ahead and start rolling our technology out in these manure lagoons. He believes he's, he's quite sure he's got the money since he's an investor himself. He's a major investor in Origin Clear. And they have a very large, both a residential lagoon up there and also animal manure lagoons. And there's high enthusiasm for the solution. Why? The solution we have does not create a whole treatment system like you saw in that Spanish thing. No, you literally, it's like throwing a buoy in the manure lagoon. It's a bit bigger. It's like a diving platform with a bunch of material underneath called biofilm. And that acts like sort of the, what happens in your intestine that sort of eats up the material. And so that is what over time sanitizes the lagoon, handles the ammonia, handles the phosphorus, handles the oxygen problem. So now it's a healthy pond, not a lagoon anymore. It's a healthy pond. And now the regulators aren't on you, on you, all over you. Now you should still implement a zero waste manure treatment system. So you have fertilizer and clean water, but there's no rush, right? So by us solving this problem, let's say it's a hundred thousand dollars. I'm just guessing right now. Solve that problem. Now we go to a few months down the road, a year down the road, whatever. When they're ready to upgrade, we're there. It's our client. We leave that, we call it the bobber, that's our code word, the bobber in place because it'll pre-treat the water for the major fertilizer system. But that way we have ourselves an immediate solution to the problem, a customer we've acquired quickly with funding that came from an outside investor. Do you see how this all kind of speeds up? And now we're set up to do the major large deals and there's no lack of animal farms with this problem. So that is really, really exciting. And you're going to hear more specifically about that as we roll out. Just to uh, circle back to the pool story. Last week, I told you that I showed you a video of the, the pools being flushed by this new system that we have out in the field. And I'm happy to say that our partner, Dwight, has now done a deal to have a 
I told you it was kind of like a one hand washes the other kind of thing with um, basically we were, it was Dwight's and then we, we bought it back and then we leased it back to him. Well, now he has done exactly what we're supposed to do. He's, he's exported it to a real pool cleaner. It's now being rented the way it's supposed to be. So that's very exciting. So to, to recap, while we're build, busy building the, while we have the, we're putting together all the websites and all that cool stuff, we're going ahead with commercialization. We have the pool flushing system. Just go to originclear.com slash CEO and look at our last briefing. You'll see the video right there. Secondly, we have the, the, the trailer park project, which is moving along nicely. Uh, we have a prospective investor for that. And thirdly, we have the Wisconsin test of uh, animal farm lagu lagoon pretreatment with financing that is in progress. And we have, we believe, an investor. So I'm super happy with the progress with investor water. Remember, it's not our end game. We're not going to be doing these deals forever. You can't do all the water in the world. It's impossible. It's already a trillion dollar industry and it should probably be a three or $4 trillion industry. No, what we want to do is put in place a marketplace where on an orderly basis, water companies can come in. They can join with uh, investors. You know, they get together. We mediate the technology and make sure that things are done honestly and like Airbnb does, right? They have super hosts, all that stuff. So that's going to be the game in the future. But for now, we're testing how it works. We're making sure there's no gotchas like, well, what about when you got to go do maintenance on it and this and that? What about downtime? There's a million topics that we have to solve. The important thing, again, in Investor Water is the fact that it's the funding, stupid, right? It's the money. The money is what makes this thing go around. You can always solve technology one way or another. I mean, we have great technology, but I mean, come on. Technology is technology. And there's always going to be water users. But guess what? The money, that's the missing piece. And I'm very happy to tell you, okay, I've been talking about investors. You know, their origin clear hasn't been investing in this as well. But now we are working on a relationship with the SBA, Small Business Administration. We have been into a relationship with, for months with the head of water and environmental programs at Live Oak Bank. And they are based in Wilmington, North Carolina. And they are a major SBA, Small Business Administration lender for small business owners in agriculture and in water and so forth. And they've been unbelievably helpful. We've already received some grants. Blew our mind how fast it went. These guys are amazing. And so what this is going to is we want to tell the SBA, look, fund these machines because then Americans will be put to work. Also water will be cleaned and it's a working asset. SBA loves equipment loans because it's an asset, right? It generates revenue, it generates jobs. So it's really doing its job. So that has been a very positive development this week. And I'm, I'm super proud of Tom Marchesello, our president and chief operating officer, who has been developing this relationship all these months. Okay, well, that's pretty much it. I didn't want to make it too long. So remember, next week, Dan Early will be on the show. There's a possibility I'll bring Tom as well, but three people is kind of hard to manage for sure. I'll have Dan from his home. He's, he's got a beard now. I'm going to have him buy a pair of cheap sunglasses. But ever since the uh, lockdown happened, he's been growing a beard. And he is closely involved with Investor Water. We're going to discuss that business. He's super excited about being involved with it. And he's bringing his technology to bear. I think it's going to be an exciting briefing. Thank you all for being part of this. It's been a great briefing for me. I've been able to tell you a lot of things quickly. Thank you. Quickly, I'm, I'm just going to address Dick Bush's concerns here. And looking at your offering, I'm not sure how it makes sense since the 10% annual return is computed at the offering price, which is about seven cents a share. All right, this, uh, this is a very common misunderstanding. The offering price, you're, you're purchasing a preferred share. It's kind of like a bond, right? It's not our common stock. You buy a bond that earns 10% dividend, called a coupon, right? And so it's, it's, char, it's priced at $25. Now, the day that comes, you're going to then have a opportunity to convert that to stock. And when you do, then it'll be $25 divided by the stock price, whatever it is. And that's how many shares of common stock you get, minus a 20% discount on the last five days of trading, okay? So it's important for, for everyone to realize this is a very common mis misunderstanding. 
we are issuing preferred shares to you. And that will eventually be listed, we believe, on the OTC as its own, just like Ford Motor Company has a bond listed that you can trade back and forth. It itself will be traded, we think. And additionally, it will be convertible to common stock. Ken has made the point to strongly encourage you to read the offering materials and to tune in with our people. And I'm going to give you the phone numbers. I encourage you to call 323-939-6645. And Ken is a whiz. He's at extension 201. Also, you can talk to Devin, who is a channel to me. He's 323-939-6645, extension 116. Tamika Towner wishes to know, would it be feasible to start an individual crowdfunding on behalf of Origin Clear? This is very interesting. Tamika, please contact us at investororiginclear.com. I'm already looking at interesting things we can do in the classic crowdfunding space. All right. Remember that we are highly available to talk to you. Join us. Come on in. Give us a call. Go to originclear.com and press on the big red banner at the top. I look forward to talking to you. We are very transparent. This is how we've managed to survive without getting in trouble with regulators all these years. And Lord knows it's, it's always a tough environment and we have always solved it by caring for our investors and being transparent and open. So please contact me. Thank you. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you next week for the big first Thursday briefing. Thank you.